Oh, what's this? I just turned my back. Oh, there you go. Look, he doesn't want to come forward anymore. It's too late. It's another protocol play. I think the plate number that they're going to use is the one from the ORCR, not the protocol plate that's installed. And then they would just put a note on the ticket saying protocol plate is attached with the number. Anyway, he's writing out the ticket now. There are certain exemptions, for example, the president, vice president, and senate president. But it's not automatic that because you have a protocol plate, you're also exempted. It only goes so far. They just stopped this vehicle here. It has a diplomatic plate. And this is actually really interesting because I remember before diplomatic vehicles were being allowed along with most pretty much anyone in the government. And then they changed the rules. Technically, it's not on the list of exemptions. So they are issuing a ticket. Look at how many motorcycles are behind that bus. One, two, three, four. Are they going to be able to apprehend them? Oh, I don't know. Look, there's a car also. Well, for sure, the car is doomed because there's no way he can hide compared to the motorcycles. You see, he is trying to leave the bus lane even though they're waving him. In fact, he might actually end up saving all the motorcycles by distracting the enforcers. You see how that rider was hanging behind the bus and now he's leaving the bus lane. Looks like it's an MC taxi. As you know, they asked for the license ORCR and then they issued a ticket before sending them on their way. I remember there was another MC taxi that was asked before and he said, yeah, I know it's prohibited, but if I use the bus lane, I can get through quicker and then pick up another passenger. And he basically said that, yeah, sometimes you get caught, a lot of the time you can get through. It is nice to see the buses working as intended though, right? Loaded with so many commuters and then one after another after another going between the bus stops. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They leave comments like, oh look, there's wasted space between the buses. Well, what will happen if you fill that space with cars and motorcycles? It just means all the buses will be congested and you're back to square one, right? Yeah. But thankfully, the focus of the government right now is improving and prioritizing mass public transport. And President BBM himself said, he wants to expand and extend there to Basaway. Many people have commented in the past that they should consider adding reckless driving for cars or motorcycles that suddenly leave the bus lane like that. You see, they did manage to block the rider. Although that rider left the bus lane and mixed with other motorcycles, he was pulled over to the side and they're issuing a ticket now. A rider just left the bus lane. I didn't get the best shot because there was a rider talking to me and I didn't want to be rude to him so I wanted to say good morning. I got a little bit distracted. But I definitely, I definitely have at least some kind of shot of that motorcycle in the bus lane before he left. Right, it did leave the bus lane. All right, it did leave the bus lane, but they managed to block him and they wish you the ticket. And then people would say, why are they picking on motorcycles? It's not that they're picking on them, it's just the motorcycles are the top violator of the a bus lane. That's the statistic. Thankfully, it looks like the driver's compliant. There you go. That is usually what happens once people see enforcers either leave the bus lane or start riding the line. There was a motorcycle rider that stopped on the highway a moment ago. He said that the enforcer should go to the top there and hold a big sign that says bus lane only. And I explained to him that there's already overhead signs, there's already road level signs, 
there's already a yellow lane marking which you can see very clearly there's already barriers for most of the bus lane it's only on the flyovers and tunnels that they had to be removed for safety reasons and it's on TV, radio, social media nearly every week and when you actually ask the riders or the drivers why they're in the bus lane they say, yes, I know it's prohibited, but I'm in a rush, I'm in a hurry, I'm running late. So why are you trying to blame the enforcers when the drivers, in fact, are well aware that they're not allowed inside the bus lane? Why are you defending people who are doing the wrong thing? Do you not care about the commuters who rely on that bus service? Do you not care about every other rider? Look, look at how many riders are here who are obeying the law. Look at how many drivers who are here obeying the law. Do you not care about them? Everybody else is doing the right thing, but you're only concerned about the person who's doing the wrong thing. That's a reality with some people. They want consideration for the minority that cause problems, but they don't want consideration for the majority that are just quiet, that are just obeying the law. They're just going to work, going to school, going about their daily lives right because when the bus lane operations were suspended before there were so many bikes so many cars in the bus lane that the service was heavily disrupted it caused big problems for the etza busway and bear in mind the busway already exceeded six million ridership in one month so commuters are really relying heavily on this etza busway so for the rider that decided to give me a hard time i hope you can see the bigger picture I mean, just consider the volume of vehicles on EDSA. Where is it at the moment? Around 420, 430,000 per day. And you've got hundreds of thousands of commuters relying on the buses and trains. And in fact, just look at the comments from people who live in other countries. They say things like, I wish our government was like yours and that they're not lazy because they say we have the same problems on our road and nobody cares, nobody's trying to fix them. I'm showing the effort to fix the problems on the road. It's not about the mistake. If you notice, I go to a lot of effort to secure people's privacy. I blur their faces, I blur their plates. If they say something that I think could identify them, I bleep it out or I cut it out. It is about showing the efforts to make things better for everybody. In the past, I've seen multiple different agencies try to wave violators out of the bus lane. And the result was always the same. As soon as they got past the enforcers, they went back into the bus lane. Why? Because without a ticket, there was no deterrent. And they know that they don't have enough enforcers to watch over 40 kilometers of bus lane. That's north and south. That's why they issue tickets to serve as a deterrent so people don't just do the same thing over and over and over again. So if you think that waving violators out of the bus lane is the solution, I can tell you it's been tried before, it doesn't work. They did manage to get him off to the side though. They did manage to get that rider off to the side. Interesting colour for the bike, kind of cool. It looks like there's a car behind this bus. Can't yet see, oops, I'm waving him to slow down. It's an improvised red plate with misspelt government. The driver has a trip ticket and he is transporting blood, so they're gonna let him go through. What's that vehicle that's trying to leave the bus lane in the background? Uh, it looks like a contractor. is do you really think they're not going to notice you you've seen the enforcers and you think they didn't see you look at how big your vehicle is you're literally the tallest vehicle on the road right now the driver already handed over the license and ORCR he didn't give them any trouble apparently there's someone behind this bus so oh, there you go he just pulled out now is that an unauthorized helmet I can't tell with the shorts they did manage to get that rider to the side obviously they're asked for the license 
ORCR. They just flagged down this right of a bus lane violation. Unfortunately, no plate on the back. And he doesn't have his license because it's already been confiscated by LTO, allegedly for a no helmet violation. Now, the ticket that he has from LTO does act as a temporary operator's permit. So now he's going to have another ticket. It's crazy, right? Ticket after ticket. Anyway, at some point, he's going to have to settle them. Although it's interesting, right? What if you just kept getting caught and then every time you get a new ticket that acts as a new temporary operator's permit? See that vehicle trying to leave the bus lane? What plate was that? It looked a bit unusual. Let's see. Oh, it's a protocol plate. Okay. I thought they released a memo saying that they haven't issued any with that number. And maybe they already came up with a new system to issue those plates. There's the ORCR, but what about the license? wouldn't drive a car like that without a license, very unlikely. Ah, there you go. And you'll see the ticket is being written out now. I just heard the enforcer tell the driver to leave the bus lane. And there you go. He didn't seem too happy that the enforcer took his license, confiscated it. But that is standard protocol. And the enforcer showed him his deputization ID.